Isn't that like a cereal or something? <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Majesty welcomes you to his royal balls. He enjoys his royal balls and believes you will too. For those already participating in enjoying his balls, please continue until he tells you otherwise. We will now admit his honored guests. Announcing Lord Weathervane of House Gantry, official order of Porcupine, and his female companion. Announcing Lord Rotherbridge of House Monroe, royal sequestered bastard son of the king and his female companion. <laughs> Announcing Lord Jeff and Lord Dan of House Pennsylvania, Lord Protectors of the Americas and official nose pickers for the king and their entourage of orgy seeking females who. Oh my. <laughs> Broadcasting live from high atop Stonehead Peak in the Blue Mountain Range, overlooking gorgeous downtown Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, it's the Jeff and Dan Show! Where are the stars of this piece of shit? It's Wednesday, it's 7 o'clock, it's time for the Jeff and Dan Show! Ooh. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Jeff and Dan Show. Your volume's down a little bit. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, well, let me, can I start over? Sure. Good evening, everybody. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Jeff and Dan Show. <laughs> there you go. That's All right, better. that's that's yeah. better. All right. Uh, we're pleased to have you along tonight. Uh, we have a real special show for you. Aren't they all special? Yes. Though, really? Yes, like Special K. We have... Um, our continuing um, episodes of Unusual, Unexplained Phenomenon. And tonight we're wrapping up UFOs and we're going to get started into Big Feet. Big Feet! Yeah, well, that's Big Foot, but big. When poor old Big Foot would be Big Feet. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes, okay. And his, yes. And his, and his bad gas. <laughs> He's got long bad gas. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of long bad gas, ladies and gentlemen, please say hello and welcome my good friend and best buddy to the Jeff and Dan Show. It's the co-host of the Jeff and Dan Show. It's Jeff. Everybody, welcome Jeff. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice yes. little golf pause. Yes, that was golf pause. Yes, and so. it was it was a, a good time. All right. Ooh. Yeah. What can we say? Okay. I think we're good. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> I shit a clown, I kid you not. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Oh, boy, don't go in there. (laughs) They all float down here. Come on, man. No, 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 your shit's not floating. It's not floating. (laughs) You kind of make your shit float. (laughs) The clown from It, everybody's all creeped out about. Everybody floats down here, Georgie. You know, so I'm just going to creep everybody out with that dude. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that... Um, fad just disappeared quickly, didn't it? Yeah, it came and went. I mean, it was like it was here for the weekend and gone. Yeah, kind of like most of my relationships. <laughs> I came and went. <sighs> yeah. What are you going to do? Or like the stealth bomber flies in undetected, bombs and disappears. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that bomb makes mountains. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm glad I have a good wife. A good wife. And a good life. Happy wife, happy life. You know. Uh-huh. So, all right, man. So what else is going on? What do we got? Oh, not much, not much. Um, let's talk about some UFOs. We uh, talked uh, last week about uh, the UFO. Yes. Um, and uh, the uh, incidents are on the rise, supposedly. I don't think it's really on the rise. I think it's just being reported more. Okay. Um. What I don't understand is, yes, it's being reported more, and we have medium that's much more faster than, and we have ways of recording things than early man. But early man had no TV or anything to watch, so he looked up in the sky a lot at night. Oh yeah, 
So oh, yeah. I, I don't know why they didn't see more. Well, that's the thing. I, you know, if, if let's just say the UFOs were real, would they know what to look for? You know what I mean? Because the celestial bodies are always moving. So like you could keep your eye on a star and it eventually starts going up over your head and eventually goes past you. So they're thinking things move anyway. So it's a good possibility if they did see a UFO, they would be like, oh, that just must be another star. Also shooting stars. That's another great thing too. Um, seeing those though just scares the shit out of you because we, we saw a shooting star one time during a baseball game. And like we're we're looking down this one way and watching the game, and then all of a sudden this green streak just goes right through the mm-hmm. sky. It looked like somebody cut the sky, mm-hmm. fruit ninja the sky, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, and it, it was wild. Everybody saw it. And they were like, "Oh my god!" And, you know, that was what was that? And I'm like, you know, "It's a meteorite." And, you know, it's, that's what color they are when they come in. Do you realize how many miles those things cover in the Earth's atmosphere when you see it? That that short burst of light. Do you realize how long that is? Probably like two, three hundred miles. It's not like. A trip from East Berlin to Dillsburg. Yeah, no, not it at all. Is, it is state size. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It could cut across most of the states on the East Coast. I, I guarantee it. And the funny part is that, did you ever wonder this? And I, most people don't usually think this, and I know it's kind of strange to actually kind of bring this up because, you know, technically it's not that time of year. But when you go out to, uh, you know, watch fireworks, did you ever notice in the sky that they bloom? Whenever they explode, they bloom. And it looks like one giant blossom, okay? Yes. If you were to change your position, what would it look like? Think about it. You're seeing this one explosion that looks like it's like it's exploding towards you. So what do other people see? Do they see the same thing? Or do they see, like, little teeny tiny bits of, uh, you know, debris from the backside, you know what I mean, going down? Because you can tell it's coming at you, you know what I mean? Like, that front part that's is really coming at you. Oh my God, man, we're like being bombed and shit. <laughs> but no, I just, it, it, this the wild, the wild part about it for me was always thinking, what happens if you go around the side of this and it's not there? If it just like looks like a, a spark going out the one side and that's it. But apparently that's not the way it is. I, I had to we... drive to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, shut it off now. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> I am in position. That's right. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Hurry up, though. Um, what I had uh, come to my conclusion about UFOs is they may exist. Okay. They may. Wait. Let me. Let me reiterate first. What a UFO is an unidentified flying object. Yes. What may be a UFO for you, an unidentified flying object, may not be for me because I may have the knowledge to identify it. Right. Okay. First of all, and then, and then something else when we say UFO, unidentified flying object, we do not mean extraterrestrial. Right. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It, right. is, it means we have not identified what it is. Right. It could be a fucking weather balloon for all we know. Exactly. Just calm down. 90% of the time it is a weather balloon. Well. Or at least they tell you that, you know. Well, well, I um, I did my homework. Okay. And there's all kinds of reasons for UFOs. The okay. star Sirius. Yeah. The planet Venus. Yeah. Airplane contrails. Um, lenticular clouds. Okay. Which are clouds that are like shift when you look at them in a different way. Yeah, and they, and they look different. Yeah, um, uncommon auroras. Okay, military stuff. Right, Ooh, military what, planes and tests and stuff. Asterisk. What I find interesting about about the um, UFO phenomena is uh, sometimes it's caused by military. Right, and when that happens. The military comes out and says, yes, we were pl- flying something that you should know about. Right. Now yeah. you'd be a good boy and go back to bed. Yeah, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Shut off, kid. You bothered me. And they'll do that. Yeah, people give up. Yeah. Right away. They'll, I mean, they'll openly admit about it. That was us. No need for alarm. Right. But they remind, remain totally quiet on other things, yeah. man. <laughs> That's what makes me think that... that there might be a little bit something more because the military... In fact, there was a few stories where military aircraft pursued, and I do mean few stories. Right. One in particular. Yeah. Um, oh, there's one out there. Yeah. It, it just got rehashed. Everybody's been talking about it. Where they, where they tried that, to trail this UFO. Yeah. It was and it a, was doing strange things. And yeah. these are coming by... These, these are reports coming from military pilots. These are no dummies. Right. These are professional people. This is yeah. This is no hoax because the, the the flight footage that you see 
is him tailing this thing and it's in his missile site. If it's the same one I'm thinking of, that it's the I'm, one from like the 80s where the guy was flying the, the plane and they kind of kept it hidden or secret for a really long time, but now they've released it and you can see the video where he's, you know how they have that, that, that thing that looks like a target, you know, and there's a little box in the center. Right, exactly. There's a little thing and he's following it the whole way through. And it's just like, and there's this one this one spot where it's going sideways and then all of a sudden it heads straight up. And then, like, it doesn't, I don't know what happens after that because they never, you know, showed us. Can you imagine if that was an extraterrestrial and two, two alien pilots are inside yeah. and all of a sudden they hear the radar lock? <laughs> 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 what, what Earthling's doing? <laughs> he's getting his guns. Oh boy, he's, I'm scared. He's gonna fire missiles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, but what I had come to the conclusion is there are all kinds of things. The real UFO extraterrestrial, if they are extraterrestrial, are so very, very few. Oh yeah, they, they are mostly all explained. Yeah, I would say I would say yeah, probably ninety eight percent, ninety nine percent are are explainable. And, and again, let's go back to the military. Military openly admits whenever there was some uh, something they were doing in the area, right? Why don't they just come out and say, you know, this Roswell thing, you guys have it all mixed up, right? Yeah, yeah. Why don't they just tell the truth about it? But here's the thing, and it goes back a very long time. And yeah, nobody's alive from then. Well, but yeah, that too, but. It goes back a very long time where the government said, basically to the American public, just just some things you don't want to know about. There's some things you don't want to know about, and there's some things we're not going to tell you about. And we need to be able to have that privacy as the United States government in order to do these things and, to, mm-hmm. and look into these things. Area 51. I see what you're saying, but uh, part of me disagrees. Yes, I think you need secrecy to right. conduct certain stuff. Yeah. But... Hey, we're all Earthlings on this planet. If you know something about extraterrestrials and something about life on another planet, yeah, we all need to know this. Yeah, oh yeah, even the Chinese. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it this is the one thing, and this is unusual that you would actually agree with this. But um, to be able to say that you uh, want to be able to share with everybody whatever findings we make, if it's an alien craft, and we now know alien technology or whatever. It's probably good to have a consortium of people around and saying, here's what we know, here's what we know how to do now. Um, and who's to say there isn't? You know what I mean? There's a good possibility there could be people around, you know, talking like that, but we don't know about it. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying about the hidden part of it. I think they are kind of hidden a little bit, you and know. Who knows what NASA's doing? Oh, yeah. Well, they're pretty actually transparent, believe it or not. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, like I know, every, I get uh, updates every week uh, on exactly what they're doing on the East Coast. And it tells me everything. It literally, like, gives me, you know, launch code, launch dates, not codes. Sorry, I don't have the nuclear football. Uh, yeah, they give me launch dates. They tell me where it's launching from, what it is, what it's for. Now, they don't go into details like, like we just had a super secret mission that went off the other day. SpaceX fired one up, and apparently it was a super secret satellite they were sending up. And all we know is that there was just a payload, and that's it. So it took it up and dropped it off and then came back down. Successful? So, yeah, yeah. As far as I'm to understand, it was successful. But and, and that's the really other thing. That's the other thing, too, man. If you take a look at a lot of the footage, what you think is UFOs, there's a very good probability that there are a bunch of explainable things. But the one thing that I think is a good possibility that the military could have been working on and may not have told us about was drone technology. Because I don't know if you've ever seen it, but if you've ever watched, if you ever watch somebody with a good drone, like like the four, you know, helicopter blades, mm-hmm. if you watch them fly one of these things, they're incredible. I mean, they they like hover right in front of you. They'll sit there, and then you just press up on the controller, and, whoosh, and right up the the whole thing is like gone. You know, it's like holy shit. And a lot of the times they have cameras. And I, I was working with one guy on a movie set. Uh, actually, it was going to be a TV show. Uh, who had a a drone, really, really nice drone. His had a camera, and the camera sent the information back to an iPad that he had on the the thing, so we could see exactly what it was doing. It's really cool. I took pictures of it. Uh, But anyway, yeah, um, he he flew it, and it was just like, gone. And I'm just like, holy shit. Remind you of a UFO? Yeah, yeah, very much so. UFO technology, UFO acting, actions? Yeah, because that's the main thing that people complain about the most, or not complain, but they they talk about the most is that oh you know i saw this thing it had lights on it and it went straight across the sky really really fast 
And then it stopped immediately and hovered there. And then all of a sudden it went straight up. That's exactly what drones do. Identical. Identical. You can do the exact same thing. And if you disguise it the right way. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the Halloween pranks, but they had <laughs> people dressing up ghouls, you know, like those really scary face things with the bl- long black like uh, Grim Reaper robes. Mm-hmm. They put a... They put a <laughs> <laughs> they put a, 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 a drone in inside of it and then they would fly it around at people <laughs> and all they would hear is this <laughs> as it's coming up towards them and they're like they turn around like ah they start running dude it's fucking hilarious <laughs> hilarious and I'm just like it's so wrong but it's so funny it is so wrong yeah <laughs> these poor people they're probably guys scraping shit out of their underwear right now but <laughs> man dude totally funny totally funny but if you get a chance yeah check out YouTube and you can you can actually find those on there it's pretty cool but anyway yeah drones man I have a funny feeling military's been working on that for a little while so. could, could very well be yeah um, we got a couple of listener emails oh, that, okay. that uh, sheds a little bit of light makes some sense alright uh, we have listener Dave from Caravan Pennsylvania drops us this email alright hi guys I catch your show every week love what you're doing keep up the good work thank you dave just really wanted to drop you a line about the ufos thing in all my years of aviation experience i have had i have not had one incident that could not eventually be explained okay that makes sense yeah um another listener um listener sarah from mcsherry's town pennsylvania writes well actually she types Types. Yeah. I have never seen a UFO, but I do know someone who adamantly has. I have no first-hand evidence except to say that all those people witnessing stuff can't be liars and or psycho. That's true. That's true. By the way, you guys should have another scavenger hunt for cash or prizes or weed. Yeah. Ooh, weed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> she has a good point that yeah, not all those people are psycho and liars. I'm sure a chunk are. Right, yeah. I mean I mean hoaxes and bullshit is part of our pastimes. There wanted there there have been people that wanted to be on camera bad enough that they make shit up like that. <laughs> I'll just put it that way, you know, that's that's really true. But as it stands, I think most people don't do that. You know what I mean? I think they they there there's validity in what they're saying, you know. That it's like rape. If you were to come out if you want to come out and say something like, oh my God, I've been inducted by UFOs. Right. They went and took my clothes off. You're branded, man. Yeah. For you're life. Bra- if you're for life, you're branded like possible nutcase. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Possible nutcase. It's like uh, Randy Quaid in Independence Day. Yes. <laughs> they took me up there, man. I told you. <laughs> They're coming back. They're coming back. Miguel! <laughs> Did they anally probe you, man? <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, you're right, man. It's, 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 and it's really funny too. Um, interestingly funny, uh, that there's things like that in the, in society that happens that, that people brand you insane. Like a great example is I know a woman at one point in time while I was visiting a, uh, visiting a psychiatric facility, uh, had said that she saw God and talked to God and that instantly branded her cuckoo. Mm-hmm. So it's like, Okay, but wait a minute. We have discussions about the Bible, and the Bible was visitations galore. It was like God came down and spoke, or God sent angels, you know, to do these things. So why isn't that we would think that this person's wacky if they saw God or spoke to God? Uh, I mean, think about it, man. It, you... There's so many people out there like, oh man, the Christian faith, you know, you got to have faith and you got to trust that God knows your plan is planned for you. And, but couldn't God tell you what the plan is? You know what I mean? Or couldn't he come down and say, hey, listen, you know, dude, you need to stop selling weed, man. Stop selling weed. You're not making enough money. Do that. Go with the blow. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to hell. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That was bad. I should not do that. Anyway, but you, you see what I'm saying? There, mm-hmm. There's these things. And alien abduction is one of the big ones. Where people will say that and everybody's like, oh, man, really? Oh, God. And I even do it. I even do it. I, I've met people that, oh, man, I was sitting on top of my trailer and there I saw it. You know, it was like instantly, boom, this person is fucked up in the head. You know, there's something wrong. Not to say that they're not valid. You know, maybe they did see something, but it's not a and, possibility of them getting picked up, at least. In, in, in their mind, they are not lying. They are totally telling you the truth. Sure. But habitual liars do that. They convince themselves, and they they could pass a lie detector with that. True. So true. 
All it has to, the human body, the mind has to convince itself. And that's all it has to do. It can, all it has to do is, is take out the abstract. In other words, the stuff that really happened that day. You know, I went down and brushed my teeth and I went and had breakfast and take that abstract out and put in this structured idea. You know, I was taken onto this vessel and they, they stripped me down below my waist and put things in my butt and, you know, that. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's, yeah. Woke up with licorice hanging out my ass. <laughs> I could swear it was a finger, maybe two. <laughs> it wasn't um, a good time. It wasn't a good time. The the one one article I had read where somebody was saying about um, abductions and what a possible explanation. Oh, man, I'm losing you. I'm losing you. <laughs> <laughs> for possible uh, um, reason for abduction, or is, is a thing called sleep para, 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 paralyzation? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think maybe I kind of experienced that, but not UFO style. Right. I mean, I dreamt I was paralyzed in my sleep and I couldn't move. Right. And um, well, I wasn't really paralyzed because when I woke up, my wife says I was moving all right. Yeah. A little but, too much. But in my dream, I was scared and I was paralyzed. Right. But this person seems to... It was just one person I read his um, his thesis or his article. Okay. And he says that sleep paralyzation... Par- paralyzation. Yes. Okay. Um, resembles this uh, sleep state where you feel like you're being watched. So... It's, it, it could be. Kind of like a dreamish is all I could... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the human body actually does paralyze you when you go to sleep. When you reach dream state, because your mind gets becomes so active at that point, it paralyzes you to prevent you from doing something you shouldn't do. Something very, very old, something very, very built into us, our base of nature, it's, it's really there. And, and it does happen. The interesting thing is when you take sleep drugs, that also happens without getting to your dream cycle. You could be after you've taken the drug and you're like, oh, I'm nodding off. And then all of a sudden, boom, something loud happens in the room. You will open your eyes, but you will not be able to move. I've done that. I was, really? on, I was on Ambien and it was the worst feeling because it was like, I can't move anything. <laughs> I'm thinking it, but I can't say it. I could only open my eyes and I was looking around. And then all of a sudden I like, I really, really super hard thought I need to move. Because I wasn't sure what that was, what the bang was. It turns out one of my kids, it happens on a regular basis now. It pisses me off. They keep the Xbox controller on their bed, and then they roll over in the middle of the night. It hits the floor, and it's resoundingly loud because there's no carpet in their room. So, yeah. So, that's the deal. That's what ends up happening. Yeah. So, I, like, freaked out, and I'm, like, sitting there, and I'm, like, oh, shit. I get And then, finally, I was able to, like, get my body to move. And it was, it was traumatizing, but not so much because I knew that something like that could happen. So I did research on it, and that's when I found out that the human body naturally does that. It keeps you paralyzed so you don't go and, like, hit things. And I think, I believe it goes all the way back to caveman nature. So that way, when you're sleeping, you wouldn't attract attention from a beast or whatever that might come and attack you while you're trying to sleep. So it just keeps you nice and still. And it's a weird thing, but we do it. So, I mean, you know, that that could be with the with the whole body you know, probe, anal probe, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and it's always funny. It's always the anal probe. Everybody's like, oh, it's the anal probe. Did you ever see the movie Fire in the Sky? I did. Yeah, a really, really long yeah, time ago. me too. Um, that fucked me up. That movie fucked me up for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> just because of the simple way the aliens treated that man. Yeah. It wasn't, yes, it was a little bit of the needle going in the eye and the uh, shit going down the mouth right right yeah but it was more well, what bothered me the most was when those aliens did not have any dignity or didn't even give a fuck right and i know it was hollywood hollywood and see see there's another one of those things where all these people can't be psycho or lying right right they can't because all those guys in that truck that night except the one that got disappeared right all of them but one passed a lie detector right Exactly. And the one that didn't pass a lie detector was a common criminal. Yeah. So, you know. He, he had stuff to protect. Yeah, he's suspicious right from the very get-go. Yeah, so he's bound to fail a drug, I mean, a, a lie detector test anyway, so. Yeah, that's called a polygraph. A polygraph. Polly want a graph? Polly want a graph. Polly want a graph? Polly want some graphs? <laughs> Polly want some graphs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. So yeah. So um. So UFOs. Well, let's let's wrap that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have any spacey UFO music? I don't actually. Believe it or not, I don't have any spacey UFO music. Do you have any Ke- Kevin Spacey music? <laughs> 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 I have this. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. So we'll kill that off and uh, we'll go with this. Here we go. All right. That's UFO enough. <laughs> Yes. Produced by Best Boy. <laughs> yeah, Desi Lou Production. Okay, but anyway, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I honestly think that uh, UFOs are, are a potential could-be thing. Well, in, be. In, in my exploration, um, I'm not saying they're not real. I'm saying that extraterrestrial UFOs happen way far less than what I thought. Right. In fact, they're almost non-existent. And, and there's one other point that, you know, last week we were talking about why would any life form want to come out here anyways? Yeah. Because it's way out here in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. It's in the boonies. Yeah. They have fried chicken at other restaurant joints in our <laughs> galaxy. <laughs> that they do. There's nothing they want here. Exactly. But then I got to thinking, if they have any kind of behavior like humans, um, you're going to have some teenagers that are going to take the car out and with their buddies and go out in the middle of the woods and fuck with the wildlife exactly. from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the Fermi paradox we were talking about last week. And I, I failed to actually tell you what the idea was behind, or the idea or the thinking was behind that question. Are we, and where's everybody at? That was the, that's the Fermi paradox. Well, where's everybody at? If there's potential in, uh, intelligent life, where's it at? There is no really good simple explanation, but one of the things that they did mention, and this is somebody else's idea, I forgot who it is, I don't know if it's Feynman or not, but um, was that if, I think, no, it was Fermi that, that positioned, that, that posited this. He said, if you were to have intelligent life, intelligent beyond where we're at right now, even, and you were to send out things to different planets to investigate and do stuff. What you would essentially want to do, and this is what all intelligent life would think about and do, was send something there to that planet, then land it there, collect natural resources, and then have it build two more versions of itself. Okay? So imagine like a robot that's there to collect information, but at the same time is collecting steel or or iron or whatever it takes in order for it to make one of itself. And then it launches those two out. What if those are not, what if those resources are not available? Well, that's the thing. I think that's the reason why they send two. Because if they send one and it gets stuck someplace, then there will be no other one going in a different direction. And there's nothing to say that that robot, while it's still there on a planet that does have viable resources, couldn't continue making more and more and more. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not necessarily stuck at two, but at minimum, you would want to have two. And they would send those away. Now, that's the other thing, too, is we have the ability to determine, even from here on Earth, what a planet is made of, or how it's made, or what kind of gas, or what kind of, you know, materials it might have on it. Uh, That's only been within the past 50 years, but still, we know. But if you send off those two, and they go out to another planet, and they do the same thing, and then they start building up an an armada of shit, and then send that out, you see what I'm saying? It's like multipliers. And uh, he's right. And that's basically what should happen, and we've never had that happen. So, what do we do? You know, do we consider that you know that we're alone in the universe? And and to be honest, dude, I have watched. Um, there's there's one more thing I want to touch on though. Uh, uh, an ass. Oh my god, look at that ass, girl. No, uh, <laughs> that's my ass. That's what I always think. <laughs> that's what I always think when I say that. I want to touch on something. Let that ass, baby. Um, you know, no. Um, I, I want to make sure that, that we understand that there's a thing called a filter. And I don't know if anybody's ever discussed this with you, if you've ever talked about it or even heard it in science before. Yeah. There's a filter. And the filter says that in order to get past it, you have to, you know, be able to do these certain things. Now, that could be anything. That could be a biological filter. That could be a, the filter could be AIDS, for, you know, per se. Or it could be Ebola. Maybe the Ebola virus is the thing that kills us all off. That filter is the thing that cleanses a, a civilization, a population. 
And if we make it through that filter, we will succeed and become whatever it is that we're destined to become. See what I'm saying? So there's that filter. We just don't know where the filter has been. Did it happen back in the Egyptian times? You know what I mean? Did it filter everybody out there? Did it happen in the 1920s with the Spanish flu? Did it happen in the 1600s with the bubonic plague? Did it happen now with AIDS or with Ebola? You see what I'm saying? So it's like one day, one day, it could either happen or has already happened, but it could happen that we have this filter pop up and everybody on the planet dies. <laughs> Are you down there popping shit? You are, aren't you? <laughs> HR, popping stuff. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been kind of a fun thing. Anyway, but yeah, so that's um, that filter is, is very interesting because we don't know if we've passed it yet or not. And there's a possibility that maybe, hey, maybe a, a intelligent life does show up and introduces a plague that kills every single person on the planet, and there's our filter. You see what I'm saying? Why would they want to do that? Maybe they did it by accident. Maybe they did it on purpose. You know, the uh, the the uh, military at one point in time gave, uh, I think it was the French. Or no, it wasn't the French. It was uh, it was the English. Gave uh, settlers, gave the, the smallpox blankets to mm -hmm. all of the, uh, in the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And they did that in order to lessen their resources, to prevent them from trying to, you know, conquer. Uh, which was a smart move, but it was a real dick move. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, go ahead. That's back when I think all races viewed other races as not so not equal. yeah inferior. Well, yeah. some some may have been superior. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They everybody thought they were superior. Yeah, it didn't matter who you were. Well, mostly everybody. I, I'm willing to believe that there were some people like um, blacks uh, and slaves. No, a culture in the Caribbean that welcomed Christopher Columbus. Oh yeah, yeah, the West and, Indies Indians, and they just treated him like gold. Yeah, yeah, because he came with all this new stuff, like a flashlight. And yeah. everybody's like, ooh, a flashlight, what's this? You know? mm -hmm. No, he didn't really have a flashlight. No, but he did, <laughs> he did have a Sheets Club card. Yes, he did, yes. <laughs> and he got himself some free MTO, and the Indians were pissed. No, and it's funny because we still consider that guy to be some type of hero, but to come to find out he was like one was of the worst nasty, possible people. Nasty, nasty yeah. guy. Just fucking and, horrible. And, you know... <laughs> This is what I don't understand. Why in the hell do we credit him with discovering America? He didn't. I know. And especially since, I don't know, we went ahead and named it after Amerigo Vespucci. Yeah, exactly. Huh? Did anybody ever hear of Leif Erikson? Huh? Right. Anybody? Yeah. Anyone? The Vikings Bueller? were here, yeah. The Native Americans were here. They crossed the land bridge in the Bering Strait up north over Alaska and came down, created, created the Inuit Indians. Uh, created the you know all of the tribes that went all the way down through North America, and they didn't get credit. They were here first. They were here for ten thousand years plus. So, yeah, I don't know for Columbus. I know, and it's it's sad that we continue to to keep you know celebrating, dude. It's like nah, no, 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 no. Not only was he not important, but he was also not. Uh, a, a real game player. You know that he never touched mainland, right? No, he uh, just just islands. Yeah, just That's the islands. All. That just was the islands. Yeah, and he and he went on there and pretty much conquered everybody he found, and still never made it to mainland. And we still credit him with being the one and that found. Still never found a <laughs> shortcut route to India. Exactly. That was your job, Mister. Exactly. Uh, what's your name again, Columbus? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. Chris, we got to talk, man. Saint, what is that wrong with you, Santa Maria Pinta? And fuck you in the ass. <laughs> the Nina, <laughs> the Nina in the ass. <laughs> all right, so all right, cool. Well, let's yes. talk about big feet. Let's talk about big feet. How about playing a commercial, and then we'll get right into talking about our big feet. That that we can do. Let's uh, let's let's set some up. We'll get going. He can score a touchdown playing baseball. When he drinks pee, his asparagus smells funny. He's the only man to have ever defeated a brick wall in tennis. He can order Chick-fil-A on a Sunday and get it. He's been able to touch MC Hammer more than once. People with amnesia still remember him. When he was born, it took four nurses, two orderlies, two hatchets, a chainsaw, and a jackhammer for him to be circumcised. Guns carry him for protection. He's the only man to fight himself and win. He can cut through a hot knife with butter. He captured all of the Pokemon in Pokemon Go with a landline. He <laughs> is the most interesting man 
in the world, and his name is Jeff. I don't always masturbate, but when I do, I use women. He's the most interesting man in the world. Stay jack-off friendly, my friends. <laughs> oh, I got a new one for us. It's just a short one. The Jeff and Dan Show is brought to you by Gay Franks. Is your hot dog happy? <laughs> Welcome to the all-new McDonald's. With our healthier selections like the McCelery Sandwich. We're maintaining our stance and not bringing in Cherry Coke. <laughs> if you're going healthy, why not try our holiday pie stuffed with gobs and gobs of protein? Our facility manager made them fresh last night when everybody went home. They're bound to delight. McDonald's. Because you only have $4. <laughs> hey, Jeff and Dan fans, this is Jacob. And I'm Tyson. And we're with the Jive Turkeys Podcast. If you ever wanted to hang out with your friends... Yep, damn it. <laughs> but, like, get drunk... If you ever wanted the feeling of hanging out with your drunk friends but not have to worry about taking them home and cleaning their vomit out of the back seat of your car? Or how about wanting to experience the thrill of taking a dump in a public swimming pool? Well, maybe the Jive Turkeys podcast is just for you. Check us out on iTunes, the podcasting app on iOS, Stitcher, Google Play, and CastBox. We're the Jive Turkeys on oh, Facebook. God damn it, no. <laughs> you sound like a fucking water. <laughs> also, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Jive turkeys. Later, fuckers. <laughs> <sighs> you can't see it when I'm flipping you off. <laughs> and now back to the Jeff and Dan show. Take it away, guys. I just wanted to reiterate that it's Jive turkeys with an S. Otherwise, you will land off uh, on some other site. I don't know. Some guys jacking each other off or some shit. But <laughs> you may not want to go there. So, you know. You're currently listening to the Jeff and Dan show. Oh, my. That's right. Yo, yes. Jeff. Are you a lonely fat fuck with no life plan? Sat playing alone with your joystick again? What the bloody hell are you waiting for? Join Coaching for Geeks. We've got a podcast, we've got coaches, we've got courses, we've got a community. Coachingforgeeks.com. That's coachingforgeeks.com. Yeah, so that's that. Hey, I wanted to tell you, man, I'm getting ready to switch my uh, my party affiliation. Are you? What I think I'm not to? going to be Republican anymore. I think I'm going to switch over to the Lemon Party. Yeah, the check lemon. it out, man. Check out the platform, lemonparty.org. Seriously. Right. Women or lemon? Lemon. Lemon. Okay. lemon. Yeah, lemonparty.org. Go ahead and check that out because, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it looks like a good good understanding, good good platform. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was sucking a dick. <laughs> Yeah, that'll make you sick, won't it? <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a good old boy party. <laughs> ah, that's pretty gross. Yeah, if you get a chance, visit lemonparty.org. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And then you can trick your friends, too, and tell them some crazy shit. So, anyway, so let's get on about Bigfoot. What do we got about Bigfoot? Let's talk about Big Feet. Yes. Where are my niggas at? I don't, okay, he's out there somewhere. Okay. First of all, Bigfoot is known in this continent also by Sasquatch. Yes. Now, just like every name that Indians have spoke, white man has changed it around a little bit so he could speak it too. Like, right. Like the words Michigan. Yeah. And Tolpe Hawken yeah. and, and Juniata yeah. are not the way the Indians really pronounce these words. Right. Sasquatch yeah. is not the way the Indians really pronounced it. What way did they pronounce it? Um, I'd have to see it, but it was something like Sasquatch. Sus- Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Sus. They had the Sasquats. sus right. Huh. But the Squatch was Quats. Quats. Like Susquats. Like a poro of quat. It's like cumquats. 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 With no cum. Right. <laughs> Lemonparty.org. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll fuck your day up. Anyway. And, and um Yeah, that's true about Native Americans, how they came up with certain ways and then we didn't wouldn't fuck them. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> and and um with uh big feet. First of all, the definition is usually a seven foot plus hair covered bipedal humanoid. Yep. Bipedal means walking on two feet, feet upright. Yep. Humanoid means, well, it looks like a human. Yeah. And hairy covered means, well, hairy. Yeah. Ball and, sack. Anyway. But, <laughs> and um, another thing is interesting that I found is 
There is some kind of derivative on every single continent, but I could not find one for Africa. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they call them apes and monkeys over there. <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably they, silverback they, gorilla or some shit, you know. That's the thing, though. Uh, Asia, theirs is the Yeti, right? Uh, um, Nepal, Himalayan. Himalayan. N- Nepal, a little bit of China, Tibet, and Bhutan. Yeah. They call it the Yeti. Yeah. And and I work with Nepal people, and here I am doing my homework on on these things. and um, Nepalese. Nepalese. Yeah. And um, I ask him, you ever heard of the Yeti? And he's, oh, yeah, yeah, Yeti, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it he says he believes, and most people believe, that they're an extinct pe- people. They were once people. Yeah. Uh, these big, tall, monsterish kind of things, but they're now extinct. But they hold on to them in folklore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they, yeah. they but, and and again, they call them the Yeti. Yeah. Um, and when we say Yeti, what do we think? We think of that white monster on Star Wars. The abominable snowman. The abominable yeah. snowman. Or that, snowman. Uh, so <laughs> the abominably snow, stoned man. All right. <laughs> the abominable slow man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Stop playing <laughs> with me. <laughs> you step on my pubic hair. Oh, my God. You're all pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we envision him as white. Yes. The Yeti, where Yeti comes from, is actually brown or, or really? black, the color of a bear. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't yeah. know that. We, we, and and uh, some some people who just don't like to have fun said Yetis, all Yetis were was bears. No. Oh. Well, that makes sense. I mean, to an extent it does. It could be an off, you know, weird, you know. Oh, have some fun, would you? Yeah, a weird, retarded version of a bear. <laughs> 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 Get all creepy. Yeah. Have you ever seen the video on YouTube that was recorded in the fifties, maybe the early sixties, of uh, out in California of like it looked like a fallen forest. There was trees down all yeah. over the place. Yeah. And you seen this video of this hairy looking straight up walking ape man yeah with really super long arms that sort of flop back and yes. forth and the, and the one scene he always ends up looking over like he's looking at somebody and then he yeah. starts walking faster he, he yeah. looks back to Karen like oh shit somebody look at, are they right. looking at me yeah he got a guy, does he have a camera yeah seriously if it were if it were a uh, very uh, animalistic creature I think I would think if it's all somebody recording it it would go after it and try and kill it you know what I mean like it, it would just seem like that's what it, because it, the way animal fi- uh, the the phytum or no phylo no that's not either that's a type of bread phyto uh, fight no no the uh, the actual uh, thing behind the reason why animals do what they do is mostly built on how big they are and how strong they are so if you see something like uh, a bear in the woods that bear looks at you and says well I'm four times bigger than he is so I'm just going to attack him. You know what I mean? That's their natural instinct. Unless, of course, they're protecting young and it's a totally different situation. And it's even worse then. But that's what I'm thinking. If, if it were really something like that, why wouldn't it attack the person that had the camera well, if it saw them? Bears a lot of times shy away. Yes. Even though they're stronger. Yeah. And it's very obvious to us they're stronger. At least yeah. the smarter ones of us. Yeah, there's 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 key... There's, I don't know if you ever heard of it, but there's a thing about bears that's an old saying. It's like... If it's brown, go d- or hit the ground. If it's black, fight back. If it's white, you're already... Basically, it's like saying you're already dead. I forgot what the rhyme was, but... It basically, it was like saying, you know, that the types of bears you would meet. If it's a grizzly, brown, you're more than likely want to just look like you're dying. Play if dead. It's, yeah, if it's a black bear, fight back. Because they're not strong enough to do enough, enough damage to you. And then if it's a polar bear, you might as well forget it because you're already out of there. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're already dead. Yeah. So, and and yeah, um, I don't know the, uh, the that that whole thing with the Bigfoot. I've heard so many stories, dude. It's not even I mean, well, the, the video that I'm talking about. It, the body language looks human. Okay. Because you're right. If this thing was strong enough, it's not going to casually walk away. Yeah. It's going to do one of two things. 
fight or flight. Right, exactly. It's not going to casually walk away. Hmm, I got to slowly walk out of here. And right. And make sure they. I got to make sure they're not cops photographing me. Exactly. You but know, when you're younger, you just casually you're... walk out of here like I'm on my way home from a baseball game. <laughs> to put a ball cap on. Mm-hmm. Right, here we go. I'm walking. I'm walking. To, to me, the body language says human in a costume. Yeah. Yeah. But those those arms were amazing. Well, the thing is, if you pay close attention to the arms, you can tell they weren't disjoint. They weren't jointed the way they would typically be as human, or I'm sorry, as as something you would consider to be Bigfoot, or even you know a gorilla, a human being, anything. If you look very closely as it's walking, you can tell there's a shoulder joint, and you can tell there's an elbow joint, but then there's a third joint where the hand would be. Watch when the arms move back and forth because you see the arm bend at where the hands should be. And that's one of the things that people picked up on and said, oh, that's just some dick in a costume. That's the reason why they pointed it out like that. Um, some people have said, because the last section is only about a foot long. But it's it's enough to go past its like down to its knees, past its ass. Yeah, and yeah. it's like down there, and it's flopping, and that's what people pointed out. They're like, yeah, that that would not be a typical thing. Nothing really ever has three joints, a- except for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's right. <laughs> I smoked two joints before. I smoked two joints. Then I smoked two more. <laughs> Maybe favorite song, Sublime. Ooh, but yeah, no, that's um, that's the thing. The uh, the Bigfoot phenomenon is is incredible. Anyway, go go on with what you were talking about. Cause I'll ta- I'll talk about my other shit the, here. The right. most common um, characteristics of of Bigfoot here in America is it's common in the Pacific Northwest, California, Oregon, Washington. Right. Um, common in wooded lands. Okay. Not so much here in Pennsylvania, although there have been supposed. Sightings. sightings of Bigfoot. Yeah. Um, in the deep south, like Louisiana, he is known as Skunk Ape. Oh. Um, the Yeren, Y-E-R-E-N, is the same thing, but it's in chi- China. And the Yowie, <laughs> the Yowie. <laughs> Yowie. <laughs> And we're going to have some Maui Wowie, and then we're going to look for some Yowie. <laughs> Yowie yeah. The Yowie is in Australia. Okay. And it's common to one coast and not the other. I don't know if one coast is wooded and the other isn't in Australia. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. The Mande Barang is um, Mongolia. Mm-hmm. Yeti is China, Him- Himalayan. Yeah. Uh, Barmanu is Indonesia. Okay. And islands. Islands. Indonesia yeah. is all islands. Pretty much, yeah. But it's all the same character. Humanoid, seven foot tall, hairy, right. swarthy fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking dapper tonight. <laughs> He's got his hair parted on the right side. <laughs> all the way down. But the only the only evidence we've managed to ever, ever pick up is some mold plasters. Yeah, for the feet. And this video that does that to me looks like it's human body language. There are several, several other videos, but they're very bad. I mean, the quality is just shit. And it's like there have been people that went out to go capture Bigfoot. Okay, they took video of what they believe to be Bigfoot, and the video sucks. And I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck did you spend all that time and energy? Going out there to try and capture images or photographs or whatever of Bigfoot, only to take a shitty camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Think about it. If you would have, if if it was that important to you and it was leading your life, basically, I think you would try everything you could to take a good version of a camera. Now, here's another great. Here's another great thing, and this is something that is just like the uh, UFO experience. Why is it now that we have excellent photography? Okay, like you can get a camera right now that shoots 1080p easily. Video or just candid shots. You can get 21 megapixel shots on any small camera now. Imagine this. There's a lot of people that put these little things out in the woods when they go uh, hunting. They put up these night shot cameras. And they basically, it looks like a Claymore mine that you put on a tree. You wrap it to a tree and then it has a motion sensor. And whenever the motion sensor goes off, it takes a picture. Nobody's come forth with any of that shit. 
And there's tons of hunting going on in all those locations. Oh, there's all kinds of trail cams. Yeah. All kinds Everywhere. of trail cams. Yeah. And there's not one has ever come forward in Miller. And it's really interesting that the last decade or so we've kind of lost touch with Bigfoot. We haven't we haven't been psyched out or freaked out about it. Nobody's really ever talked about it so much. I think I saw one instance of it in a movie that was kind of low budget, and they were talking about, yeah, we're gonna go get we're gonna go take pictures of Bigfoot and blah blah blah. But we've just really kind of just lost interest in it, I guess. And it's not one of those phenomenons that you can just lose interest in. If it's real, you want to know, you know? Now, granted, nobody has ever been harmed right. by a Sasquatch. Right, yeah. But um, we still would like to know about this creature. Yeah. Like, I mean, we, we as humans do have this uncanny thing of cataloging everything. Yes, yeah. And which is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forget what the, the hell I where the what the hell I was going with this. Uh but yeah, but there's there's no evidence other than these mold plasters. Yeah. There's no hair, there's no turds. Right. right. There's there's no genetics, no DNA, no, no nothing. No genetics, no DNA. It almost seems like a hoax and in Enola maybe in the 80s. I hear about this story. The story pops up every once in a while. Right. And in Enola, there is a road called um, Pine Hill Road. Okay. And it dead ends. Okay. And it it actually dead ends up in the mountain. All right. And, uh, well, not up in the mountain, at the foothill of the mountain. Okay. And um, I think you and I went up that road. Is it the one that goes all the way to the signal tower? No. There's not, one? Not okay. quite. Okay. Not I. Not, I know where you mean. Okay. Yes, I know what you're talking about. All right. Not quite that. Down down the mountain somewhere. A little further. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But uh, somebody dressed up in, in an ape suit in his, what do you call them? Gia suits? Gia, Gia, Gia suits? Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Gia, giggly giggly suits? I forget. Okay. Anyways, they dressed up and they looked like Bigfoot. Okay. And they went out a couple times and... Made themselves seen by passing cars and stuff. Right, right. If they didn't stop it, they were going to get shot. Right, yeah. Somebody's <laughs> bound to come out. And Somebody was going to shoot them. Yeah. But um, the gag for a while was the Pine Hill monster of Enola <laughs> coming to get you. Oh, shit. Now, that also leads me to believe that, you know, the Pine Hill monster. Have you ever heard of the Boogeyman? Oh, yeah. What's your definition of the Boogeyman? Uh, anything that could attack you probably in the middle of the night. And usually it's just something that can't really be identified. That's my version of the boogeyman. There's so, tons and tons of versions of everybody's boogeyman. So it's a very generic, right. maybe maybe even a very individual specific. Right. Like my boogeyman is only in the woods. Yeah. Like you won't be. find a boogeyman in the city. Boogeyman ain't going to get you in the city. Yeah. It's drug dealers and crackheads <laughs> and cheap whores <laughs> the ones that give you crabs anyway no you're right and that's you're absolutely right um but there's also another one that that's come up over the last decade as a matter of fact they're just really starting to explore it now uh that sort of goes along the big foot lines but has sort of grown because of the internet the internet has made it this huge thing called slender man Oh, I have heard of him. Yes, where it's like you'll be in woods and you'll look over and what you think's a tree actually is not a tree. And this 22-foot tall thing comes walking towards you and then swoops you up and kills you or tickles your funny bone or yes. something. I don't know. Slender Man is very popular with the young. Yes, right I, now, yeah. It may be, yeah, he's tall, very tall yes. and skinny. Yep. And he has no face. Correct, yeah. No face and no distinctive figures uh, on his body. As a matter of fact, he could be multiply jointed, like I was talking about earlier with Bigfoot. Um, but yeah, it's just been, and it, and it's been, it's just a myth. It's an urban legend, just like um, the New Jersey forest area has the New Jersey Devil. Um, you know, everybody has their own thing. Mexico has one. It's really, really, really. But they've been able to kind of prove that it really is what it is. It's <laughs> called the Chupacabra. Yes. <laughs> it does a hat dance whenever you put a sombrero on the ground. No. In a, what, is, what is it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it was supposed to be a demonic dog. It's basically what it was supposed to come down to being. But what it really looks like is if you took an op- a possum. I don't know why they say opossum anymore. They just say possum. Uh, if you take a possum and meld it with a dog and then sort of give it these characteristics of like a rat. 
That's what the chupacabra is. Mm -hmm. And there have been videos, and you can see them, of people capturing these things. They do exist. But I think they're a weird classification of dog that we just don't, you know, we didn't have classified yet, but now we do. Are they as vicious as their reputation? Yes. They kill everything they possibly get. Anything walking near it, they will try and kill it. The thing is, they're not that big. They're not like superhumanly sized. Oh, they're just no. sort of, but they're fast. And that's the thing. There's that's one it. video where this guy's trying to shoot one and he can't shoot it because it's moving too fast. Yeah. And it's on a ranch like in freaking Texas or something or the border of Texas, uh, like San Antonio area or whatever. And he's trying to shoot this fucking thing and it won't, he can't get it because it's going too fast. And then he finally gets close enough that he can finally take it out. And he does. And then they showed in the video. Now, here's the thing. Not that long ago, I went to look for that video, and I couldn't find it. (laughs) Now, here's the interesting part about that. YouTube does not take down videos unless you've done something that you're not supposed to do, like Logan Paul, you know, showing a suicide guy. You know, that's the kind of shit you would end up... This video that was on there had this little Mexican guy in his cowboy hat, white cowboy hat, wearing a a light, light, light blue shirt with some striping on it, and he was shooting at this fucking thing and finally he hit it and then they, they walked over and they like were putting the camera all up close to it and shit and they're like, what the hell is that, man? And they're like, they're saying in Spanish, most of them. And um, yeah, and nobody knows. And they're like, that, that's a chupacabra. And the guy kind of came up and was like, that's got to be what this is because we don't know. They've never seen anything like Spell this. Spell a chupacabra. A chupa is just C-H-U-P. Uh-huh. C-A-B-R-A. It should have come up by now. Yeah. 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 Ooh. There used to be there used to be freaking like videos, dude, and I cannot find them. Now there's other videos that people have, but that one, I really wanted to see that one again. Because the guy is just going ape shit about the fact he can't hit this damn thing and he just you see like the chupacabra go by and then all of a sudden you see a bullet hit the ground. And you see little dust offs of him trying to hit this fucking thing. And it's like, uh, and he finally shoots it. I guess he was like maybe 10, 15 feet from it. I don't know if it was charging him or not, but the guy with the camera wasn't being real cool about it. And he, he ended up shooting and then they turned around and looked and you know, there it was and he had killed it. So I don't know, but that, yeah, that video, I can't, I couldn't find it. Uh, maybe I just had the wrong shit to look for. I don't know, but yeah. Chupacabra, interesting creatures. Chupacabra. All right, man, we only have a couple more minutes. So, okay. Let's get into that last thing here. So we'll talk a little more next week about Bigfoot. So yes, we're, I'm gonna. I would uh, encourage anybody that's interested in the topic of Bigfoot to please drop us a line, Jeff and Dan at jeffanddan.com. dot com. That's right. Uh, I will read your email and I will discuss it on the air. Yes. Uh, please uh, write in and uh, tell me what you think, what Be- you know, <laughs> any experiences. Or if you just want to cry bullshit. Yeah, we're going to leave the, leave the sexual stuff out of the emails, people. That's just not well, good. No, we don't can... want to suck your dick, okay? Just oh, just yeah. stop. Yeah, leave that out. Yeah, just fucking knock that shit <laughs> off. We don't want to hear about it. And uh, next week, we're going to finish up with Bigfoot, and then we're going to go on with human disappearances. Nice. Yep, going to go with human disappearances. Yeah, there's some good ones to be done in there, I can tell you. Oh now. my, yes, absolutely. Yeah, some interesting ones. Exactly. Not necessarily crime stuff either. I, I take it you're you're more on the supernatural with this. What, so, you, how whatever you just cannot explain, like Ray right. Green Car. Okay. Cannot explain it. Yeah. We found his car, we found his hard drive, and I think we found his phone. Yeah, but that was it. That's it. We, we found some evidence... Um, where he was Google searching how to fry a hard drive, how to permanently erase a hard drive. Wow. And, uh, but, you know, he was a district attorney. Yeah. He could be Googling anything for work. Exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. No one knows, but we'll find out. But he he disappeared. Or Jimmy Hoffa. That that was another one when I was doing research. a really good one. one. Yeah. And, you know, when you think about it, um, why did he disappear in in the classic, or, he worked as a union leader. Yeah. And he yep. had ties to the mob. Yeah. Then the mob supposedly didn't like him anymore, so they aced him. Is that why they is that yeah. why they put him on uh on ice, yeah. Because they just didn't like him anymore. Well, it's just the fact that he was going against what they were saying to do. Okay. Yeah. And they didn't like that. They so, were like eh. So it wasn't one of the But none of them admit it. That's the thing. There's tons and tons of evidence that they were pissed off with him, but nobody admits it. Nobody will come forward. Well, they're mostly dead now, but 
most of those people that were alive at that time are just like, we have no idea what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. Now, more than likely, somebody does. But you know, Yeah, somebody does. We'll see. We'll see. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Cool. So what else you got? That's it for me. That's it for today. That is it for me. All right. Well, we're getting ready to split here. We got a couple more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Seems the show's shorter, but I think we're packing more in, and it's getting a little bit better. And it's not as uh, it's not as as, as <laughs> hurtful. <laughs> we don't slam your ass tickles anymore. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the next week, uh, if you got any questions you would like to talk to us, let us know, jeffanddan.com. Uh, and you can email us from there. You can use our contact form, or you can just email jeffanddan at jeffanddan.com, like Dan's already said. Uh, you can also see us on Spreaker. That's where we're hosting right now. Uh, and also on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're fucking everywhere. We're like, we're like, we're like bad fucking pants. We're everywhere. Anyway, so uh, yeah, all right, man. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post this out here. So you can to, uh, <clears throat> give me a second here. Let me make sure it's all set up correctly and not too loud. There we go. All right, it is fucking okay. There we go. There we go. And you know what, folks? That music means only one thing. Our show has come to a close for tonight. But fear not, because you know we're going to be back here next week, and if we're not, we're going to be here the next week after that. I'm sure you can hold on till then. Calm down. Just take, just take two, and uh, see us next week. In the meantime, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jeff. That's Dan. Have a good night and a great week.